Hello and welcome back to Scotland Surreyor. This is video number two on the channel. Um, first of all, I'd like to just give a little thank you to everybody that actually took the time to watch video one. Um, it's had a couple hundred views, which is pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with that, to be honest with you. Um, the Surreyor community obviously seems to look at lots of content and things, and I've had bits and bobs of feedback, which has been genuinely appreciated. So just a quick shout out to, first and foremost, obviously to anybody that's, that's taken it, but we got some good feedback from Martin and Quinny and Chris. Louis, thanks very much. Uh, John Nellis, obviously, who I know from the Football Index content, uh, content that he used to make, and he's now making good content for Surreyor. So uh, really pleased, obviously, with some good sort of influential community members. So that, that's really appreciated, and I'll obviously try and continue to make some half-decent content as well. So the first video, if you've not seen it, was MLS on a budget, trying to get players for... 0 0.050 eth or under uh, that would ideally play and maybe start contributing to getting a score and that you could fingers crossed maybe trade trade up the way this one uh, it's purely defenders it's again on the MLS and it pretty much covers most defenders to be fair of, uh, of the rare variety um, and this time we're looking at all the defenders up to uh, 0.15 eth so a little bit of scope um, for players so I've split it into two categories. First of all, uh, for people that are just, you know, edging their way up on a budget. So this, you know, is all the defenders up to 0.075 eth. So again, um, I've tried to classify it based on performance. This is the, th uh, the last calendar year's performance once again. We've looked at the scores of the 75 plus, 55 plus and the 35 plus scores. And the next slide as well, there's a there's a sort of mean average as well, which will which will also be quite helpful. So, ideally, if you're looking for a defender that in the MLS under this kind of budget, this it does include the previous uh, previous defenders from the 0 0.05 slides on video one as well. So you'll see, for example, on the 75 plus scores, there's um, some players highlighted in gold. These are players that are uh, available for 0 0.050. Um, and they're still, you know, contesting good scores and they're actually, you know, up there with the guys that are a little bit more expensive. So it does go to show you that there are some um, there are some bargains out there. You do need them playing and there's no guarantee that this is historical data. You know, I'm, I'm not the manager of any of the MLS clubs, so I can't choose who, who plays every week. But certainly using hyster historical data will genuinely or uh, generally give you, you know, quite a good opportunity um, of getting some scores on the board, so you'll see there's a few uh, a few standouts there in the 75 plus scores. Uh, Maynard Figueroa um, of Houston Dynamo. He didn't play this weekend past. Uh, I believe he had a positive COVID test. Um, but yeah, he's you know he, he's a uh, he's getting on. He's uh, he's turned 37 and he's contracted until the the end of the year. So there is a good chance that you know that Houston will continue to use him pretty regularly. Um, I, I guess the idea will be to try and blood a new, uh, you know, new new defend, defensive players, fullbacks, etc., to, to ideally take over. But he's still playing and he's still posting pretty good scores. So you'll see there that he's the only player that's got five seventy-five plus scores uh, in a calendar year, which is you know it's half decent. And um, Harrison, uh, a fool, who um, he plays for Columbus Crew. Uh, he's not quite as old as Maynard. He's I think he's thirty-four. He's also contracted to the end of the end of the year, December the thirty first. But he's also a big contributor, and you can see that he's the top fifty five plus scorer. So, pretty much every time again that he steps foot, you know, on the pitch, he's he's posting the fifty five plus score. So, you know, the the more the more I see um, from the the sort of the weekly performances on on Surreyor, um, you know, it, it starts to become apparent what scores are going to help you basically hit thresholds, etc., or be in contention for prizes. So, you know, me myself, I'm, I'm building a team still, um, you know, relatively new in comparison to many of the managers. So I'm trading my way up and building my team up and ideally trying to get some both rewards and referrals just to, to build a team rather than ploughing lots and lots of cash or money in. So, um, yeah, uh, I'm ideally looking for players at probably this stage now in, in my Surreyor journey, uh, I don't have enough money to go up to the, the, the next one yet. Um, however, you will see that here there are, there are some pretty consistent performances. You know, Florian Jungworth, uh, again, you know, he's he's pretty consistent. Um, Ruan at uh, Orlando City, 
is, is, is also there with 375 plus scores. So these, these, these defenders can, you know, they can put in good scores. And Tom Peterson there, you'll see he's consistent. 75 plus, 55 plus. He's one of the, you know, the top, sort of top five uh, in that range. So um, you'll notice Nick Lima has a, an asterisk against them. Uh, he... Uh, he has nine fifty-five plus scores, but in there he's got a, a good solid one hundred as well, which he scored, which I thought was worthy of mention. Um, he also scores, you know, the thirty-five plus um, very, very regularly. I don't personally feel that probably the thirty-five to, to forty is probably quite enough. You're know, certainly not enough to be challenging at the top end of the, the divisions, but. Maybe perhaps if you were using these players in the global, um, the 35, 40 plus, it might just get you over the line. You know, I didn't see any point in putting players that were scoring 25 plus or, or even 25 or less because those scores just, uh, they don't really cut the mustard, you know. So we've got um, a good sort of selection of, of, of players there that hopefully give you um, some, you know, some good tips. Uh, Donny Toya, again, um, so, you know, alongside... Uh, Marcello Silva at Real Salt Lake, um, pretty consistent, and again he's in the 55 plus. He's the only player from the under 0.05 th bracket, so that gives you an idea just of some of the players um, that are that are performing. This data I'll mention as well. Um, I looked at roughly, I'm looking at 60, 65 defenders, I think it was, that all fell into this category. And this was priced on the secondary transfer market as opposed to coming out at auction. I'll go on to the next slide. Um, defenders average. So this is over the last 15 games. They're all still priced under 0.75. And the only way I can really describe this is, I suppose, is these are guys here in this slide are ranked. Um, they all have to have played 75% of the games in the 15 to make it. So there are guys that have got, you know, an average score of 72. But if you've played four games in 20, well, you know, to me, there's there's not much point really in signing these guys. Um, so these guys have played 75% of their team's games. You can see from left to right that they're ranked. The cheaper they are on the market, um, if they equal a score, so for example, there's, you know, uh, Jungworth and Lundquist, both with a 47 average over the last 15 games. Uh, Jungworth, at the time of looking, was cheaper on the market. You'll also notice that he has played a higher percentage of games. He's played 93% of games as opposed to Adam's 80%. Adam Lundqvist, incidentally, uh, just after I'd finished the research, seems to have had a bit of a price jump. He was coming in round about the 0 .075 uh, up until probably Friday there, and uh, all of a sudden he's taken a bit of a, a bit of a jump. So you might not find that he's actually, you know, um, directly in this category anymore. A couple of good uh, players again in there, though. You know, Frederick Brillant, the Frenchman um, at Washington. DC United, very consistent, uh, good player in contract till the end of the season. But again, he's getting on. You know, he falls into that category with uh, Figaro and Affle, where you know it's a bit risky. Could they retire? Could they move club? Could they maybe potentially uh, move out of an opta league um, in maybe their you know their swan song season, etc. There's also some, again, I think pretty good value. You know, there's Nick Lima, um, you know, and Ruan at Orlando. Um, and Zarek Valentine, you know, I think I think there's some pretty good value there. So that's their average score over the last 15 games, um, which gives you, a, 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 I suppose, a, a level of consistency for when you're when you're looking at making your purchases. For players that are, uh, you know, pretty much in the market for for most defenders, um, so they've maybe got, you know, a sort of wealthier or stronger budget as such. Um, these are the players. Um, that again score. So you'll notice that the top 75 scorers, although you've got players, um, you know, you've got Calvo and Ali Adnan there, um, Chase Gaspar, you know, we've got some good players there, you know, they've got the Chicago and the Colorado Rapid players, etc., and things. Maynard still comes out on top for the most 75 plus scores, um, which I'll be honest, it surprised me. I, I did expect um, some of these guys that are coming in, you know, at 0.15 F or anything between roughly 150 or 200 UK pounds, you know, I thought they would be performing slightly higher. Um, there's also some new players that have, you know, kind of broken into this category, um, you know, Bresson and Joe Matinho, 
Aston that have, uh, you know, been pretty consistent and posted decent scores. And at least these guys show that they can actually, you know, they can post the scores. So if you've posted the score once or twice, there's a good chance you can do it four or five with a run of form. Um, the players that are in gold, which is only Marcelo Silva, is from the 0.05, so he's a third of the cost of some of these players, and yet he's hitting 75 plus as often as some of the others. Um, and the players in silver on this occasion were the ones from the previous slide, so they're, they can be maybe, you know, uh, whether it's half the price or maybe they're maybe about 70% of the, the cost of, of the players that are still in the, in the black type there. So 75 plus, you've got some good... Uh, good consistent sort of performances there and as you would expect with 55 plus you're you know it's double figures so you know more than 50 percent of the of the mls season uh, you're looking at uh, consistency there so you know you've got guys like andrew farrell that, that kind of come into contention and alexander callens who i know he's a little bit um more expensive but you know at new york city it's, um you know good player michael boxall who i know he's a firm favorite and i know a couple of the other guys that do youtube videos have mentioned him and you know what he does he presents really good value and in, in truth i suppose um you know if you're if you're looking at boxall against maybe certainly against figaro or Affle, you know he's, he's a little bit younger you probably get more seasons out of him and he probably does present the the sort of most consistent sort of value around that uh, price range 35 plus, which again, your absolute minimum if you're paying this kind of money, you're wanting good performance. Um, David Romney comes out on top, but there's you know some pretty credible performances there as well from Robin Janssen and uh, you know again Chase Gasper showing his consistency. Michael Boxel's in there again. Minichio Pineda, you know I've not mentioned him. So there's some really um, pretty solid uh, defenders in there as well. Defenders average, so this is the same players again uh, over the last 15 games, but obviously with the price range extended from 0 0.075 to 0 0.150. So this is pretty much covering most of your, your rare defenders. Maynard comes out still on top with his 59 uh, over his 80%, but you know, Keegan uh, Rosenberry there at the Rapids, you know, the, the Rapids defenders in general, um, you know, the, the, they come out on top. You've got Lalas. Um, uh, Aku Bakker as well, you know, that, that's pretty consistent. Danny Wilson there, uh, who's in my own team, I think he posted a 65 uh, and he's under the 0 0.05. You probably get him for about 0 0.038 at the moment. But the Colorado Rapids uh, defenders, they, they, they come up, they score well and, and they play well. Um, so, you know, there's him playing 100% of games. He's coming in at 0 0.110. So there are guys that are more expensive than him that don't present as good value. Um You've then again, you know, we've mentioned Calvo already. Frederick Brillant, again, consistent, relatively cheap. Um, probably for if you know if you're looking to use uh, just players for this MLS season, then you know Figaro, Brillant, Affle. If you're only looking to use them for one season and then sell them on, um, you know the proof is in the pudding there. This is what I would like I say classify as, you know, it's, it's like the boxing rankings where you're looking at pound. You know, pound for pound, what's the you know what's the value? And when we're looking at the value there, if you can score somebody that's going to play eighty percent of games, uh, you can sorry purchase them for zero point zero five, and you're only looking to use them for one season. Then you know why would you spend zero point one two five? Of course, there is obviously the sell on value as well to take into consideration. But again, that's the the defenders. Um, and that was basically up until Saturday the 18th of April. The next few videos I'm going to do, I'm going to continue the theme um, with the MLS and I'm going to cover the midfielders from 0 0.05 up into the same bracket to one, um, 150. And I'm going to finish up with um, the strikers and then the goalkeepers will just be a, a separate article as well. Um, obviously, the price range will be different on the goalkeepers to, to get a starting one. So while well, I uh, go and cry uh, in the fact that my, my, my own goalkeeper, David Jensen, wasn't even on the bench for uh, for Red Bulls, um, I'll uh, yeah I'll leave you all to it. Thank you for watching again. Um, we've got certainly lots more content and lots more sort of statistical data. Um, statistics in my eyes, they, uh, they weigh more than opinion. So um, thanks very much indeed, and we'll see you all again soon.